Hey, hey now, in this video, we'll cover how to use Logic Pro with piano and keyboards. Now, we'll take a look at the setup. This is the way I connect my Complete Control keyboard to my iMac, which hosts Logic Pro. I also use an audio interface so that I can use a microphone and jam or record with other musicians. As you can see, both the keyboard and audio interface connect to the iMac via USB cable. This is the screen display of Logic Pro, which is hosted on the iMac. I am using the Focusrite Scarlett 2i4 audio interface. Next, we'll cover the important topics in Logic Pro. Once you have launched Logic Pro to create a track for piano or keyboards, click here on the track drop down list and select New Tracks. Next, select the MIDI box and click on the Software Instrument option. I like to select the Open Library checkbox so I can readily select an instrument once I click on the Create button. Once you are satisfied with the configuration of your track, click the Create button and you'll be taken to the Instrument Library. If the Instrument Library is not visible, click here. Now, I'll browse over some of the myriad of pianos, keyboards, and synthesizers that are available for you to choose from. I'll select the Yamaha Grand Piano. I'll also change the icon of the track by right clicking on the existing icon and changing it. Next, we'll cover how to record a simple track. The first thing we'll need to do is set the audio preferences to suit your needs. In my case, I am using an audio interface to input and output sound, so I'll configure my audio preferences that way. The keyboard I plugged into my iMac will automatically be recognized by Logic Pro. After that, we'll set the counting and metronome to assist in recording. The metronome will click in perfect timing over your track while recording. To activate the metronome, click here. I will keep it activated for this demo. You can adjust the metronome settings by selecting the record drop down list and selecting metronome settings. The count in feature will count in a set amount of bars prior to the recording starting. I will activate the count in feature by clicking here. Next, I'll click on the record drop down list and select the four bar count in option. Now we're ready to start recording. Now I'll press the red record button to initiate the recording and when we're done, I'll hit the stop button.
Click here to rewind the track and click here to play the track. Another great feature to assist you in your music creation is the loop feature, which will loop on the selected amount of track, which you can then improvise over or play other instruments over, among other things. To turn on looping, click here. And this is how it works. I'll touch on a couple of the many options to enhance the sound of your track. Smart controls and plugins. Smart controls can be made visible by clicking here. I'll adjust a few knobs to alter the sound. Next, we'll cover plugins. Plugins are located here. You can add plugins by clicking on the gray area here. You can turn plugins on and off here, and you can change them here. Click on the gray area here to add a plugin. As you can see, there is a wide array to choose from. Once your plugin appears, you can choose from presets and adjust levels. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below.